Deltarune Chapter 3. Kind of feels weird to be talking about it already since Chapter 2 has only been out for almost a month. So far, in my previous videos, we've covered the entirety of Spamton and the weird behavior of Ralse, but we haven't really addressed the actual future of Deltarune. What does Chapter 3 look like? What can we expect going into the next installment? Chapters 3, 4, and 5 will all drop at the same time, so whatever gets started in 3 will more than likely not wrap up as nicely as Chapters 1 and 2 did, with a concrete beginning and end. So, in this video, we're going to be predicting Chapter 3 in Deltarune, and all the weird things you could encounter. I hope you enjoy. When it came to Undertale, I felt guilty for fighting monsters in the underground. But do you know what monsters I don't feel guilty defeating? My opponents in Monster Legends, which is a free-to-play game for iOS and Android. Create a world for your monsters to live in, and start building up your own monster army. In Monster Legends, there's hundreds of monsters to collect, and during the holidays, like Halloween, they release a Halloween-themed monster, events, and special challenges. And, you know, I'm all about Spooky Month. There's even monsters out there for YouTubers like Jacksepticeye, Dream, and Mr. Beast. Monsters can breed and create new species, and the amount of combinations is insane. Level up your favorite monsters, master their skills, and build your strategy. Then, take them to the weekly in-game events or to the different PvP modes to see how strong you really are. So, if you want to build your own monster empire, download the game for free in the description below. You'll get a special reward worth $30 that includes food, gems, gold, and an epic monster called Kaori. This offer only lasts until October 25th though, so you have to act fast. And of course, a big thanks to Monster Legends for sponsoring this video and supporting me as a content creator. So, Deltarune Chapter 3. At the time of writing this, my Rouse video had just released. I took a week off from YouTube, so my apologies for getting this out a bit later than I hoped. We do have a lot to talk about, though. Chapter 2 really hit us hard with a lot of subtle information hinting at what is yet to come in Deltarune. So, for this video, we're going to be jumping around a bit. We'll be covering a few different things we can expect in the next chapters. But let's first start off with the main contender, the ending of Chapter 2. The ending scene is really neat because it leaves so much to interpretation. Chris disappears for quite a while, only to come back and open up a dark fountain right in their living room. And it's not only the act of setting up this dark fountain that we should be shocked about, because before Chris even considers opening the fountain up, they make sure they open the door and turn on the TV. But why? Well, these two things are pretty important. So first, the door. We know that Toriel saw Chris outside, and she called the police. For whatever reason, the police don't arrive right away. So Toriel dozes off like the rest of the bunch. But it's because of the police that Chris opens the door in the first place. They just got a call that a crime has been committed, Toriel's car had been damaged, and someone could still be on the prowl. If the police arrived and the door was shut, they'd have to knock and wait for a response. But if the door's ajar, and there's probable suspicion due to the call about a vandal, then they'll more than likely enter the property due to something being wrong. Chris is basically inviting them into the Dark World. Whether it's Undyne who shows up or naps to Bluk, we don't know yet. But when they peer into the darkness beyond that door, I can't help but think they're going to find themselves in the Dark World. But they won't be the only one, because Toriel will be there too. And Toriel's inclusion is a really interesting dynamic. We know that Toriel has fire magic according to Undertale, but we also know how protective Toriel is of her children too. If Toriel ends up becoming a party member in Chapter 3, then she'll more than likely be able to harness the power of fire to protect the ones she loves. Chris, a mother protecting their child. A bond that when tested could truly spell disaster. And this has me worried. Will Chapter 3 play out the same as Chapter 2? Can Toriel be manipulated in a genocide capacity to harm the police officer who entered the Dark World? Undyne seems to hate heat after all. I can imagine a situation where Undyne kind of goes bonkers in the Dark World. Not crazy, but just excited by what is possible? If she's benching cars in the real world, how powerful will she be in the dark world? If she gets in the way of Chris, though, will we be forced to strike her down by manipulating Toriel? It could be the Snowgrave route all over again. It's kind of worrying me, I'm not gonna lie. Undyne was the one monster in Undertale that seemingly was so determined they resisted immediate death. If there's one powerful character we should be afraid of crossing, it's her. In Undertale, she became the true hero of the genocide route, against the villainous choices of the player. If there's a confrontation, it isn't going to be a cakewalk, even with a child and mother bond. Then again, we could be up against Napsabluk, and that changes everything. But we have to remember that this route would open up only by our choices. There's still the role of the chapter's villain, and possibly secret villain that is separate from this. That is, assuming the pattern persists. And that takes us to Mike, a possible villain for Chapter 3 who is hinted at by Spamton. 
We're told not to believe anything we hear on TV and that the man is a criminal. This criminal being Mike. Now, in my previous Spamtown video, we went over the connection between Mike, 1997, and the phrase Big Shot. Everything about Spamtown takes a while to explain, so check out that video for the full scoop. But after Chris opens the door, they then head over to the TV and turn it on. Static overtakes the screen, and as the chapter draws to a close, we can see a strange smile creep across the television. And I want to believe this is Mike. And I strongly believe Mike is going to be some off-the-wall game show host who will pull tons of Metaton-like shenanigans. Spamton hints during combat that he was screwed over by a game show host. And seeing as he believes the guy in the TV is a criminal, I imagine all this might go together. My prediction is that a lot of the environment for Chapter 3 will focus on the television and the concept of changing channels. You could be in a sci-fi movie one instant, and then in a thriller, a romance, an odd array of commercials, etc. All of this will encompass the Dark World. It kind of makes me think of that Animaniacs game for Super Nintendo, where you move between all the different sets for movies. This would make for a very entertaining world where we wouldn't know what to expect next. And imagine if the villain, some overarching game show host, had the ability to change the channels. It'd be neat if our characters swap costumes if suddenly we appear in a western. But with that said, we also have to assume that the television won't be the only setting. We have a couch, action figures in the windows, a telephone, chairs, and the entirety of the kitchen. As of right now, it seems the entire room's contents are used to generate the dark world. But since this area of the house is one giant room, will it all have influence? Will we start off inside the couch, exploring objects that were lost there? Lint, spare change. It would seem appropriate. After we leave the dark area, we are suddenly on Mike's radar, and the game show begins. But this leads us to another interesting situation. This is a house full of memories. The memories of parents and children. What is going to happen when Toriel meets Ralsei? How is it going to play out, and how will the influence of the home's memories play into that? We still don't know truly what Ralsei is hiding either. I mean, I did a complete breakdown of him possibly being a villain, which I'd highly recommend checking out, but is Ralsei going to stir up the emotions of Toriel regarding Azrael? Furthermore, it's quite possible that Ralsei is the one telling Chris to open up the new Dark Fountains. Ralsei has private conversations with Chris when he feels the player isn't watching, like when we're distracted by Susie entering Noelle's room. Ralsei takes advantage of that to get down to business with Chris without the watching eye of the player. Could Chapter 3 reveal Ralsei's true goal and what he's been hiding? One of the things I think is coming whether in Chapter 3 or even Chapter 4 is the choice of what dark fountains we want to explore. We have no idea if Chris opened up a different dark fountain while they were outside. At some point, multiple dark fountains are going to become a thing, and they will throw off the balance of the world. At that point, I wonder if we'll have a choice of which fountain we want to close off first. It could offer tons of replayability if our actions affect the other Dark World. If the prophecy is true that Ralsei tells us about, then I can imagine we'll see the Titans soon. And just like the Godzilla movie on TV, maybe Susie will get her own Susiezilla moment after all. Perhaps that is the final showdown against Mike. There's a lot to look forward to in this next chapter, and all of this doesn't really even consider the actions of the previous choices. Is Birdly still alive? If not, Will the police investigate what happened at the library? Assuming they aren't all trapped in the Dark World? It's a lot to ponder about. But I've babbled on for a bit now. What do you think Chapter 3 will contain? Let me know in the comments below. And once again, thank you to Monster Legends for supporting my channel. Don't forget to download Monster Legends using the link in the description and collect your reward before October 25th. And until my next video, cheers!